Hi, this is Keith with Alien Drones. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Always appreciate it. So today I'm going to talk about flying your drone in controlled airspace. Uh, how you do that, how you actually get approved to do this, so that we can share the skies with all the airliners and uh, helicopters that are out there. I'm going to walk through the process. Uh, I've actually just taken a trip here to within a controlled airspace in the area. I drove a little bit. And I'm going to walk through the process of going through the link approval. Uh, from the FAA because now the uh, FAA is allowing recreational pilots to use this approval system as well. So I'm going to walk through it step by step what it looks like and hopefully get a real-time approval and uh, take off from here within the controlled airspace. So here we go. So briefly, before I get ahead of myself, I thought I would do just a brief explanation of what the LANC is and why you'd be interested in it. Now, maybe you already know about that because uh, you're, you're becoming more educated on what the FAA is doing. However, the LANC system, or the uh, Low Altitude Authorization and Notification Capability, is provided uh, through the FAA, and they have a real nice uh, kind of outline on what it all is on their FAA site. So feel free, take a, uh, I'll put a link down below, but take a moment and go uh, through that site. Uh, but all I wanted to do was kind of show why I'm talking about it here first. So what it does is allows us as drone pilots to get authorization in controlled airspace and uh, so that the FAA and the airports know where we are and that we're not doing anything that is going to really get us in trouble. We actually are, are real time authorized to fly in these this airspace so it's really pretty slick now uh, how does it work um, again we actually go on the app and what I'll do shortly here is I'll show I actually did it uh, on air map and actually went and got a real-time approval to fly a drone in a class D airspace so the the reason that it was kind of important is before as a 107 pilot uh, we could do this uh, through the airports that had this this uh, authorization available but it actually wasn't available in very many airports only a few of the large ones so it's become more and more available and uh, allows us to get right next to those airports and and do it safely uh, and I'm assuming as time goes on there's going to be more and more airports so that's actually pretty cool now until just recently and actually in a couple weeks in the future recreational pilots could not actually use this system what they've done is not only the 107 pilot, but now recreational flyers are going to be able to do this as well. So with that being said, I'm going to go through my experience of actually getting a link approval in a Class D airspace for the first time. So I wasn't sure exactly what was going to happen. I had to do a couple of things over and make sure I had them. But I'm going to show that here uh, coming up next. So here we go. All right, so here we are in our controlled airspace. I had to drive a little ways to get into this area. This happens to be a Class D airspace in central Wisconsin, CWA Airport. And what I'll do is I'll pull up the map so we can see what this looks like. I'm going to enter Air Map uh, on my device and actually get us uh, authorized to actually fly in this airspace. So I'm going to go through the process here. So, okay, so we should be seeing here on the screen is I'm going to zoom this out a little bit. So we'll actually see where we are, and you can see here's a Class D airspace. If I click up this warming, you'll see that it says Mosin E Class D airspace requires FAA authorization. So we're going to go ahead and authorize us so that we can actually fly in this airspace legally. Okay, so let's flip this down here. We're going to zoom in on our location. There we go. So that means we can have a ceiling in this particular area of 400 feet. So we're going to go ahead and authorize this. There we go. All right, so to do our flight plan, we just need to plug in some of the numbers. So we're going to go ahead and uh, say yes. We're going to stay within a thousand feet, no problem. We're going to click the next button. Okay, we're going to start now, and we're not going to be here for uh, uh, four hours. We're going to be here for an hour, and we're actually going to fly about 200 feet. Uh, just to make sure that we have uh, enough enough to get above these trees that are here. And uh, we're going to do drone insurance. No, hopefully we don't need any of that. Next, we're going to have what is the name of the pilot. And you can see that we have alien drones in here, which should be just fine for now. Phone number, 
please provide a brief safety note. So what we're going to put in here is that we are just doing a quick survey. Okay, and we're going to do a quick survey of the rooftops here. And the visibility, we have lots of visibility. It is a completely clear day. As you can see out here, we have completely clear above us here, so no problems there. Maximum speed of the flight, we are actually going to be doing 20 miles per hour. Weight of the drone. Okay, we're going to put in the weight here, and we know that this is about two and a half pounds for the Mavic Pro. So we're going to go ahead and put that in. And yes, of course, we're going to be in the visual line of sight. Yes, we do have the 107 certificate. Yes, it does have anti-collision lighting, comes with the Mavic here, so we're good there. Do you have any completed your pre-flight check? But of course, we make sure all the hardware was tight, propellers were on securely, battery was uh, tight, of course. All of our checks that we have in our manual, we did that ahead of time. Yes, is your drone registered? But of course, of course it's registered. We have to do that. We know that as being responsible drone pilots. Next. Now, surprisingly, this is taking a lot longer than I thought to actually go ahead and do this. It's, uh, it's a spinning circle here, so I don't know if it's actually confused and we don't have signal or we actually are taking this long. So uh, maybe with a better signal, uh, it would go faster for you. Uh, but it's saying creating flight plan and it's actually taking a little while to do that so and it did come up and say verification is required this is the first time i'm doing this so it's uh, actually going to verify the phone number which is good make sure you're just not putting up some junk out there okay awesome so by having this phone number in here it's actually going to give us a text when our flight is approved so that's awesome and it asks us for a token make sure we're the same people that sent it yes verify and creating flight plan. So we'll see how long this takes here. Well, this is taking a lot longer than I thought, but let's continue on. We're going to be persistent and get this bugger right. All right, and that's what we were looking for. So we have here authorization upon submission. So we're good, it's showing us everything we have here. Hopefully all we have to do is submit and we're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and submit this. And cross our fingers. And there we go. Now you notice also we did just get a pop-up on the screen here that showed us that uh, we were authorized and gave us a little notice, so we did get a text back immediately showing that we were okay to fly in this airspace. So we are good to go. We can actually start. You can see the timer started there. So we're gonna actually go ahead and take off our Mavic legally in Class D controlled airspace. So here we go. And yes, we take full responsibility for our flight, and away we go. Take off. And that is how we fly in controlled airspace without running into an airplane and we do it legally. And of course, during our flights, we're gonna keep below our ceiling that we actually said we were going to do of uh, 200 feet. So we're gonna follow the flight rules that we submitted. So we're up here flying in controlled airspace. Again, if it was useful to you, make sure you subscribe and click the like, really appreciate it. The subscribe will let you know when there's new information available from the FAA and I will update uh, this accordingly so uh, you can be sure that you're getting the most up-to-date information. So again, thanks for watching and good flying. So who needs that automated landing, right?